One of the major ways now that people are being stopped uh, for drink, drink or drug driving is what's known as a mandatory intoxilizer checkpoint. Um, and these things are set up at specific places, at specific times, uh, on, speci on specific dates. Uh, guards are given permission in writing from an inspector, and the inspector will say that on this date, uh, in this place, between the hours of 3 p.m. and 5 p.m., or whatever it is, I want a checkpoint set up. And so once they have that authorization from an inspector uh, to set up a checkpoint, they're authorized to stop and get anybody to give a sample of their saliva whether or not they think that person is intoxicated or otherwise. Uh, you could be perfectly fine, uh, but they can ask you to provide a specimen of your saliva using a device that they give you, and you must provide it. Can you have one drink and drive? You shouldn't, obviously everyone knows you shouldn't, um, because the impact of one drink could be different for you than for me, or for me, and then, or someone who was maybe a good deal lighter than me, uh, who hadn't maybe eaten in a while or hadn't slept in a while. The a drink can affect you in different ways at different times. So your ability to process alcohol might be different to mine, and mine might be different to somebody else. So trying to apply an, ar an arbitrary rule of one drink to everybody is an impossibility because we all are different. And so the safe way of approaching that is to obviously not do it but there is no definable scientific way that you can say that one is, is okay. It might be on one day, but it, it might be on the next day. Can you break down, like, in the simplest way, what, what's the story there with limits? Yeah, well, that's a really powerful limit. What, what is the limit? It, it's different for, for blood, it's different for urine, and it's different uh, for breath. Each one has a different limit. As to what it is, even the Medical Bureau of Road Safety won't tell you. And they analyze blood and urine samples all the time. They, they can't tell you because everyone is different. You're different to me, your height, weight, sex, whether you've slept, whether you've eaten in a while, whether you're taking medication, all these different factors all affect how your body will process alcohol. So on one day you might be, you could drink alcohol and uh, you would be under the limit. The next day if you're feeling a bit sick or you haven't eaten in a while, you drink the same amount of alcohol, you're over the limit. So it's impossible to give a scientific formula. So blood is 51 to 80 micrograms would be six months. 81 to 100 would be one year. 101 to 149 would be uh, two years. And anything above 150 is three years. And they're set in stone. You know, there, it can't be a situation where, will the judge give me less? You know, uh, when you tell them about my circumstances, they might give me less, they can't. They must give you what the law says. And so that's what the law says, and they must follow that out. How do I get out of a drink driving charge? If by getting out of it you mean succeeding or winning it, then you have to kind of work very hard at it with your legal team, whoever that is. And that really means going through the, the process step by step by step as to what happened. And you should familiarize yourself with what happened from start to finish, and write it out. I mean, I'm a really big believer in this. Write out whatever, whatever happened, your, your first interaction with the guard on that night, all the way through, what was said to you, what did you say to them, and so on and so forth. And that then is your, your, your account of what happened. And that then is what your legal team bases its defense of you on. And if there's enough information in that to form a defense, and every case is different, then that's then uh, the foundation stone for your defense. And that might be enough to get you out of that drink driving charge.